project is to combine all our knowledge about genetics, about uh, legal, legal aspects and politics, economics, to build some kind of framework with which we can protect marine biodiversity. The problem is that now we have a lot of industrial pressure on the, on the sea. We know there is a lot of growing industries that go to the sea, that are exploiting resources of the sea. But there's no real uh, way, no real possibility to control what's going on. What we are proposing is to use DNA as a proxy, as a matrix, to measure the impact of the industry on mine biodiversity. Our goal is to understand the basic legal framework where, where there are opportunities to utilize environmental DNA in decision making, um, to understand broadly what the barriers might be and how to get past those barriers. Um, we're looking at different case studies, so the U.S. is a case study, uh, Chile is a case study, uh, we'll look at Scotland, um, as well as some other examples. In, in addition, we're looking at the international framework. Um, we're thinking about both aquaculture and the deep seabed, uh, deep seabed mining in particular. The issues are going to be different in different places, and our level of knowledge is different in different places, and that will influence the utility of environmental DNA and how we can utilize it to manage our resources. So we are interested in what we call ecosystem services. This is the benefit that society receives from the processes, the ecological processes that occur in the ocean. It's looking at how people value uh, different ecological processes. So I get to kind of look at what these processes are doing and then kind of look at the more social side and see how people are putting a value on that and then how we can use that in different analyses like the cost-benefit analysis. Because we want to see if it's possible to use this new methodology of assessing biodiversity changes linked to a very, very well detailed impact area. And fish farming is a good example because we know how long they are being in the site and where exactly they are and they don't move. But also, if this is the case and we prove that we can get the gradient, for example, using this new generation of sequencing in the changes of biodiversity on a place which has been uh, impacted and non-impacted, then we can translate the same methodology to the deep sea.